Where do all the lost and abandoned submarines of the world end up? Do all submarines go to heaven? Well, we've found a few of these old relics that are scattered across the globe for you to take a look at today, and some of them are slightly more abandoned than others. So come on and take a dive with us as we take you on an adventure beneath the waves. It's going to get weird. From a genuine real-life yellow submarine without a beetle in sight to a Soviet war machine turned Hollywood star, here are 20 abandoned submarines that actually exist. Number 20. The Quester 1 First up, we have an unusual sort of submarine from humble beginnings. This is the Quester 1 a 45-foot-long handmade machine that was built back in 1967 by an enthusiastic man and shipyard worker by the name of Jerry Bianco. The Quester was fashioned entirely out of salvaged metal, and much of it was obtained from the SS Andrea Doria, a passenger vessel that had wrecked off the coast of Nantucket in 1956. And so, using a bunch of bits from that sunken ship, and after having spent three years working on the project, Bianco prepared to launch the Yellow Submarine. Yes, it was indeed yellow. This unfortunately did not go exactly to plan. The sub fell from the crane when it tipped over sideways and got itself lodged in the mud. It wound up permanently stuck there in the Coney Island Creek. It's visible to varying degrees depending on the tide and has become less vividly yellow as time has gone by. It just kind of looks sad, poking out of the murky waters in Brooklyn, wondering what might have been. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Now we've all been there, you know the feeling. You're out driving your massive submarine around, and suddenly you find yourself surrounded on all sides by a massive and sticky swamp, and you've run aground. And you know how difficult it can be to get a tow truck out to get you out of a swamp, so you know, you just have to leave it and risk getting a ticket. Apparently that's what happened here, but what do you really think? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. The HMAS Otama The HMAS Otama holds a significant place in naval history as the first submarine of the Oberon class that was commissioned by the Royal Australian Navy. This formidable submarine played a crucial role in Australia's defense strategies during the Cold War era and beyond. Commissioned in 1967, the Otama was built in the United Kingdom and brought to Australia where it had served as part of the RAN fleet for over three decades. With a length of 295 feet and a displacement of 2,030 tons, the submarine would be equipped with advanced technologies for its time, which included sonar systems, torpedoes, and anti-ship missiles. The Otama participated in numerous military exercises and operations, which included conducting surveillance and intelligence gathering missions and playing a vital role in monitoring potential threats and protecting Australia's maritime interests. The submarine's stealth capability and long-range endurance had made it a useful asset in both defense and deterrence, and after years of service, the Otama would finally be decommissioned in 2000, marking the end of an era for Australia's submarine fleet. It's now preserved as a museum ship at the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney, allowing visitors to explore its interiors and gain insights into the life of submariners and the challenges that they faced at sea. Number 18. German Submarine U-352 the U-352 was a German submarine that played a fairly major part during Germany's U-boat campaign during the Second World War. Commissioned in 1941, this submarine conducted several patrols and participated in the Battle of the Atlantic, which was a critical naval campaign between Allied and Axis forces. In May of 1942, it would encounter the USS Icarus, an American Coast Guard cutter off the coast of North Carolina. 
A fierce battle ensued, and that resulted in the sinking of the U-boat. The wreckage of the U-352 now rests on the ocean floor at a depth of approximately 110 feet, and that makes it for a popular destination for scuba divers and maritime archaeologists. The preserved remains of the boat provide a time capsule-like glimpse into the technological advancements and operational strategies that were employed by the German Navy during the war. The submarine's hull, periscopes, torpedo tubes, and other components show everyone who dared to venture down there what it was like in these vessels back in the 1940s. Number 17. The SMUB-122 the SMUB-122 was a German submarine that served during World War I as part of the Imperial German Navy's U-boat fleet. Commissioned in 1917, the UB-122 was a Type UB-3 submarine, a class known for its versatility and effectiveness in both surface and submerged operations. This vessel is known to have undertaken several patrols in the English Channel and the North Sea, where it played a role in disrupting Allied shipping and naval operations. Equipped with torpedoes and a deck gun, the submarine posed a constant threat to merchant vessels and warships alike. However, it met its fate in March of 1918. While engaged in a mine-laying operation off the coast of England, the submarine itself struck a mine and sank, resulting in the loss of its entire crew. The wreckage of the vehicle now lies on the seabed for the rest of our lives. Number 16. The USS Ling the trouble with old submarines is that they're pretty clunky and cumbersome, especially if they stop floating. And that's what seems to have happened to this old eyesore. The USS Ling submarine is a U.S. Navy Balo class sub that was decommissioned way back and then found its way to the Hackensack River in New Jersey. It had originally wound up there when it had been on display at the New Jersey Naval Museum, but when the museum folded, the submarine was simply abandoned, most likely on the account of being an unwieldy object to move about, to be honest. Anyways, it would be plagued with difficulties, which included getting stuck in the mud of the riverbank. It then flooded, and much of the interior was very damaged. It also suffered from a bunch of vandalism over the years that it sat moldering in the river. Now, however, there are efforts being made to restore the submarine to a better condition, and then, perhaps, they'll be able to move the hefty vessel from being an old stick in the mud. Number 15. Submarine Explorer Next up, we have a submarine that's been called, albeit in a controversial way, the first submarine. Whether that's genuinely the case is highly debatable, but what we do know is that here is a vessel that was built between 1863 and 1866 by Julius H. Kroll and Ariel Patterson in Brooklyn, New York. It would be produced for the Pacific Pearl Company, a group that harvested pearls and pearl shells in the Pacific, and they initially had plans to use this submarine in the pearl beds of Baja, California. Now, we all know that submarines can be a tricky business, and sometimes these things don't go precisely according to plan. So, this explorer wound up being more trouble than it was worth. There were some fairly major difficulties with decompression sickness, you know, what they call the bends, and then there was the issue of overfishing of the pearls in that region. In the end, the submarine explorer was ditched and abandoned in Panama in 1869, and that is where it still sits in the shallows on the shore of the Pearl Islands in Panama, just rusting away. It's now in critically poor condition and is basically irreversibly damaged, and so that is the end of that. Number 14. The INS Cursira S-20 This submarine, also known as the S-20, was a diesel-electric submarine of the Indian Navy. Commissioned in 1969, it was a Soviet-built Foxtrot-class submarine that served the Indian Navy for over three decades. This submarine played an important role in India's defense strategies and participated in numerous operations and exercises during its active service. The submarine measured approximately 300 feet in length and had a displacement of around 2,000 tons. It would be equipped with torpedoes, mines, and a full complement of 82 officers and sailors. It was a place for showing off the technological prowess and capabilities of the Indian Navy during the Cold War era. This is really what everyone was doing during the Cold War, so it was really kind of the norm. After being decommissioned in 2001, it would then be converted into a museum, 
and is now located in India. The submarine museum offers a one-of-a-kind chance for visitors to delve into the inner workings of an authentic submarine, providing an interesting opportunity to poke around in the daily lives of submariners and to witness some of the formidable challenges that they confronted while at sea. The INS Kursura remains a kind of symbol of India's maritime heritage and the importance of naval defense in safeguarding the country's interests. Number 13. Soviet Submarine K-159 Soviet Submarine K-159, also known as Project 627A, was a nuclear-powered submarine that served in the Soviet Navy. Commissioned in 1963, it was part of the November class of submarines, which were designed for anti-submarine warfare and patrol missions. Back in August of 2003, the K-159 met a catastrophic ending. While being towed for scrapping, the submarine encountered rough weather in the Barents Sea. The deteriorated condition of the vessel, combined with the challenging conditions, would lead to the submarine sinking. As a result, nine crew members perished, and the submarine now rests on the seafloor at a depth of around 800 feet. As well as being pretty rubbish of a thing to happen in general, the sinking of this peculiar submarine does pose a few questions about how nuclear stuff is disposed of in the world, and how much of it is simply being dumped, even by accident, in places where it can cause damage or harm to the natural environment. The incident did actually prompt some discussions and efforts to enhance safety measures and protocols for dismantling decommissioned submarines. It drew attention to the potential environmental and safety concerns that are associated with the disposal of retired nuclear-powered vessels, further emphasizing the need for responsible and effective solutions in submarine decommissioning. Number 12. Soviet Submarine K-278 Komsomolets Soviet submarine K-278 Komsomolets was a nuclear-powered submarine that was part of the Soviet Navy. It would be commissioned in 1984 as part of the Project 685 Plavnik class, also known as the Mike class of submarines. It was an innovative vessel which had a bunch of advanced, for the time, technologies and various spangly design elements. One of the more notable features of this machine was its titanium-hulled pressure hull, which made it super strong and capable of diving to great depths. The submarine was also equipped with advanced sonar, torpedoes, and unique escape capsules designed to evacuate the crew in case of emergencies. This was to be tested and proven totally useless, though. Tragedy would strike on April 7th of 1989 when a fire broke out on board and while it was submerged in the Norwegian Sea. Despite the best efforts to contain the fire and save the crew, the submarine would ultimately sink, resulting in the loss of 42 lives. So much for those escape capsules. The sinking of this machine raised significant concerns about submarine safety and the handling of emergencies in deep sea environments, and it also drew attention to the environmental risks associated with nuclear-powered submarines. Today, the Komsomolets lies on the seafloor at a depth of around 5,000 feet. Number 11. The SMU-118 the SMU-118 was another German submarine that served during World War I as part of the Imperial German Navy's U-boat fleet. It was commissioned all the way back in 1917 and was a Type UE-2 submarine, a class known for its long-range capabilities and ability to operate in distant waters. The U-118 conducted several patrols in the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea, targeting Allied merchant shipping. Equipped with torpedoes and a deck gun, the submarine posed a constant threat to enemy vessels, contributing to Germany's naval blockade strategy. However, U-118's active service was relatively short-lived. In June of 1918, while on patrol in the Mediterranean, the submarine struck a mine near the coast of Corsica. The explosion resulted in the sinking of the U-boat, leading to the loss of all the crew members on board. The wreckage now rests on the seabed, and archaeological explorations of the wreck contributes to our understanding of submarine warfare and naval operations of the era. Number 10. Submarine U-475, Black Widow. 
Did you ever want to own a real-life ex-Soviet submarine? Well, who even knew that that was possible? This is the submarine U-475 Black Widow, which was apparently a submarine of the Soviet Navy during the Cold War and is now in private ownership. I mean, where do you even keep such a thing? This thing is currently moored at Strood on the River Medway in the United Kingdom, where it now functions as a museum ship and is actually open to members of the public to visit. Before it was a strangely placed submarine with a private owner, the Black Widow was part of the Soviet Project 641 class of submarines, known by NATO as Foxtrot, and it played a standard sort of submarine role within the Soviet Navy as a conventionally powered attack sub. In total, there were 74 just like this one built between 1957 and 1983. The Black Widow would be commissioned in 1967, based at Riga, serving the Baltic fleet before ultimately becoming a training vessel, and then being decommissioned back in 1993. Number 9. The USS Threshner SSN-593 the USS Threshner SSN-593 was a nuclear-powered submarine in the United States Navy that was commissioned in 1961. The Threshner was the lead ship of the Threshner-class submarines, designed to be fast attack submarines with improved underwater performance and capabilities. Tragically though, in April of 1963, during a deep diving test in the Atlantic Ocean, the Threshner would experience a catastrophic event. The submarine, along with its 129 crew members, would be lost at a depth of over 8,000 feet. The exact cause of the accident would be determined to be a failure within the submarine's engine room, resulting in a loss of propulsion and the inability to surface. The loss of the Threshner prompted a significant overhaul of the submarine safety practices and design standards within the United States Navy. It led to the establishment of the SubSafe program, a rigorous set of submarine safety regulations, all aimed at preventing similar incidents in the future. The tragedy also highlighted the risks involved in submarine operations and the constant need for advancements in safety measures and emergency procedures. Number 8. Soviet Submarine B-80 the Soviet submarine B-80, also known as Project 651, was a nuclear-powered submarine that served in the Soviet Navy during the Cold War era. Commissioned in 1974, the B-80 was part of the Akula class of submarines, which were designed for anti-submarine warfare and strategic patrol missions. So, the Soviet designation Project Akula, the Russian word for shark, was known by NATO as the Typhoon submarine. These are a class of nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines that were built to accommodate a crew of 160 in comfortable living conditions. Although, how comfortable anyone can be when submerged in a tank full of sweaty humans for months on end is anyone's guess. These typhoons were actually the biggest submarines ever built, and they have a submerged displacement of 48,000 tons, which is pretty chunky indeed. Developed during the Cold War, the Typhoon class of submarine is a creation of the Soviet Union as a response to the United States Navy's then-new Ohio-class submarine. That's how things were back then. All the time, the two superpowers were locked in an endless one-upmanship, constantly insisting that they were the ones with the bigger and better stuff. Then, General Secretary of the Communist Party, Leonid Brezhnev, announced a new type of nuclear ballistic missile submarine in a 1974 speech and that's largely believed to be where NATO had picked up the word typhoon in relation to these vessels, as they were never actually known as that in the Soviet Union. Number 7. Midget Submarine Type A the Midget Submarine Type A, also known as a very crazy word that I am not even going to begin to try and pronounce, and I have no idea why the writer would put it in here, in Japanese, was a small submarine used by the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Second World War. Originally commissioned in 1943, it would be designed as a covert attack weapon to be deployed from mother submarines or surface ships. The Type A submarine featured a crew of two, measuring approximately 70 five feet long and would be armed with two torpedoes capable of operating at around a depth of 100 feet. The submarine's small size and stealthy nature made it suitable for surprise attacks on enemy vessels or coastal targets. One of the most famous operations that involves the Type A submarine was the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. 
Five midget submarines would be launched from mother submarines to infiltrate the harbor, but their mission was largely unsuccessful, with only one of them inflicting minor damage to a U.S. Navy destroyer before being sunk. Although the Taipei submarines were not as successful as initially envisioned, they did demonstrate the Japanese Navy's innovative approach to unconventional warfare during the early years of the Second World War. The small size and stealth capabilities of these midget submarines would lay the foundation for future developments in naval warfare, particularly in the realm of submarine operations. Number 6. SMUC-61 SMUC-61 was a German submarine that served during the First World War as part of the Imperial German Navy's U-boat fleet. UC-61 would be commissioned in 1916, and it was a Type UC-2 coastal mine-laying submarine designed for operations in the narrow and shallow waters of the North Sea and English Channel. It carried out several mine-laying missions, deploying mines to disrupt Allied shipping routes and naval operations. It would also be equipped with torpedoes, which enabled it to engage enemy vessels directly when necessary. However, its active service came to an end in June of 1918. While attempting to evade British countermeasures, the submarine would strike a mine off the coast of England. The explosion led to its sinking, resulting in the loss of the entire crew. The wreckage of UC-61 remains on the seabed to this day, serving as a historical artifact and a reminder of the perils that were faced by submariners during the First World War. Exploration of the wreck provides valuable insight into its construction, technology, and operational challenges of German U-boats during that war. Number 5. KRI Passopati The KRI Passopati 410 is a diesel electric submarine in the Indonesian Navy. This whiskey class submarine was first commissioned back in the 1960s when it was originally built in the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It's named after an ancient Javanese hero known for his bravery and wisdom, and with a length of around 250 feet, it played a special role in the Indonesian Navy's maritime defense capabilities. Equipped with torpedoes and a variety of sensors, it would primarily be used for anti-submarine warfare, reconnaissance, and patrol missions. Over the years, the Pasopati has undergone various upgrades to enhance its operational capabilities. It's participated in numerous joint exercises with other navies, contributing to regional maritime security and cooperation efforts. As one of the oldest submarines in the Indonesian Navy, the Pasopati has become a symbol of the country's commitment to maintaining a capable submarine fleet. It represents the importance of naval forces in safeguarding Indonesia's vast archipelago, its continued service demonstrating the commitment to maintaining a credible and capable submarine forced to protect Indonesia's maritime interests and ensure regional stability. Number 4. The ARA San Juan The ARA San Juan S-42 was an Argentine Navy submarine that went missing in November of 2017, capturing the attention of the global audience. The German-built TR-1700 class submarine would be commissioned in 1985, serving in the Argentine Navy for over three decades. The submarine had a length of approximately 216 feet and a displacement of over 2,000 tons. Its primary mission was to conduct patrols, surveillance, and intelligence gathering operations. The San Juan played a sizable part in Argentina's maritime defense and sovereignty in the South Atlantic. This submarine then disappeared during a routine exercise, raising concerns about its fate and the safety of the crew. An international search and rescue operation that involved various countries would ensue, but tragically, no trace of the submarine or its 44 crew members was initially found. After a rather exhaustive search effort that lasted over a year, the wreckage of the San Juan would be located on the seabed of the South Atlantic Ocean at a depth of approximately 3,000 feet. The exact cause of this submarine's loss remains uncertain, but it's believed that a catastrophic event, potentially related to a battery malfunction and subsequent explosion, would lead to its sinking. Number 3. USS Scorpion SSN-589 the USS Scorpion, or less catchily named the SSN-589, was a nuclear-powered submarine of the United States Navy. Originally commissioned all the way back in 1960, the Scorpion was a skipjack-class submarine designed for fast attack operations. It served as a formidable asset during the Cold War, conducting various missions and patrols in support of the United States' national security objectives. But the Scorpion met a disastrous end. 
In May of 1968, the Scorpion went missing while returning from a deployment in the Mediterranean Sea. The submarine, with its 99 crew members, was presumed to be lost, and after an extensive search effort, the wreckage of the Scorpion would be discovered on the seabed of the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 400 miles southwest of the Azores. The exact cause of this submarine sinking was never properly understood, or at least it's not been officially disclosed, but it's believed to be the result of an unexpected incident possibly related to a torpedo malfunction. The loss of the USS Scorpion deeply impacted the U.S. Navy and also illuminated the massive risks associated with submarine operations, and frankly, all kinds of other combat at sea or elsewhere. It is an inherently risky business now, isn't it? However, like with all of these things, there were some lessons to be learned from the tragedy, and as a result, there were a few additional safety checks and procedures that were added to the entire system. As well as that, they also altered the emergency response protocols and continued to develop better safety designs in the United States Navy submarines. Number 2. Italian Submarine Nazario Suaro S518 the Nazario Suaro is an Italian submarine that was part of the Italian Navy since the 1980s. It would first be commissioned in 1980 and was known as the Suaro class submarine, named after Italian naval officer Nazario Suaro. With a length of approximately 200 feet and a displacement of over 1,500 tons, this submarine was a diesel electric submarine designed for a variety of missions, which included anti submarine warfare, surveillance, and intelligence gathering. Equipped with torpedoes and anti-ship missiles, the submarine would be capable of engaging both surface and underwater targets. It had a range of around 10,000 nautical miles, enabling extended deployments and operations far from its home port. The Suaro was a super important part of the Italian Navy's maritime defense capabilities, and it participated in various international exercises, contributing to regional security and cooperation efforts. This submarine underwent several modernizational programs during its its service, all in order to enhance its operational capabilities and lifespan. The Suaro represents the dedication and professionalism of the Italian Navy and its submariners. The vessel would finally be decommissioned in April of 2002 and had undergone a complete transformation to become a museum for the Institution of the Sea and Navigation Museums of Genoa. This, I know, like most of the other submarines on our list, doesn't really constitute being abandoned. Rather, she's been reimagined and has still served a useful purpose instead of moldering in a shipyard or being broken into scrap metal. This is probably a preferable outcome, but what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Number 1. Soviet Submarine K-77 this time we're having a look at Soviet Submarine K-77, otherwise known by NATO as the Juliet-class sub, or a Project 651 by the former USSR. This diesel-electric vessel was built all the way back in the 1960s at the height of the Cold War for the Soviet Navy, and most terrifyingly perhaps, it would be designed to be armed with a long-range cruise missile, which could be fitted with either conventional or nuclear weapons. It all depended on how fruity that the leadership happened to be feeling at the time. The the general aim of this thing was to destroy American aircraft carriers and bases, but you know, back then, they were also pretty keen to know how they could hit a bunch of other places in the United States as well. After the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union, this submarine was leased by a Finnish guy to use as a restaurant and tourist attraction in Helsinki, as one does. He also held beauty pageants on board the sub, most notably the Miss Submarine pageant, where the winner would later become this D-bag's third wife. The case 77 was actually pretty successful as a restaurant, but the guy wanted more profit, so he leased it to somebody else, this time a Canadian, and those plans went all to hell, and it was eventually placed on eBay of all places. Oddly enough, despite the low starting bid of $1 million, no bids were received. In the end, it went on to do better things, at least for a short while. This particular submarine is actually a rather famous vessel, not unused to having the stars of the silver screen inside of her. She would be used in Hollywood motion picture K-19 The Widowmaker, which had starred Harrison Ford and Liam Neeson. In 2007, she'd be flooded during a storm and then sank, but afterwards was then rescued and refloated, all before being rather unceremoniously scrapped. 
Well, that's all from the jumble of submarine junk that's cluttering up our world. Which of these incredible vessels blew your mind? And have you any others to add to the list? As always, you can let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.